Good morning, students. In the previous lectures, we had discussed about the phylum Echinodermata, the characteristic features of phylum Echinodermata, the water vascular system in Echinodermata, and today's lecture will be focused on the larval forms of Echinodermata. Myself, Balram Sai, Assistant Professor in Zoology, Government Dunga College, Pekan. Larval forms of Echinodermata. In Echinodermata, the development may be direct or indirect. In direct development, there is no larval stage. Direct development is seen in only a few echinoderms living in Arctic and Antarctic waters. Whereas in indirect development, the life cycle includes one or more larvae. Many types of larvae occur in echinoderms. They are as follows. First is the dipleurula larva, bipinaria larva, Brachiolaria, Ophiopluteus, Echinopluteus, Auricularia, Doliolaria of Holothuroidia, Pentacrinoid larva. Now we will discuss each larva stage in details in the upcoming slides. First is the Dipleurula larva. This larva develops from the gastrula. It has the following silent features. First, it is the fundamental larva of all echinoderms. It is microscopic. It is a free swimming larva which is bilaterally symmetrical and oval in shape. It has a gut formed of the mouth, the esophagus, the intestine, the stomach and the anus. It has two ciliary bands, namely a pre-oral band and the around the mouth and the adoral band inside the mouth. The perioral band is used for locomotion and the adoral band is used for the collection of food. It feeds on diatoms. The dipleurula larva develops into the bipinaria larva. <clears throat> Bipinaria larva. It is the second larva of starfish. It develops from the dipleurula larva and it has the following silent features. It is minute and microscopic. It swims freely on the surface of the water. It is bilaterally symmetrical as shown in figure, can be divided into two equal parts. It has a straight elementary canal with the mouth at the anterior end, this is the mouth, and anus on the posterior end. The body has a number of outgrowths, these are the outgrowths. Which are easily visible in the picture, and these are called as arms. The arms are covered by ciliated bands and are used for locomotion. It has two unpaired arms and five pairs of paired arms. The arms are as follows first, the dorsal median arm, this one, dorsal lateral arm, pair of dorsal lateral arm. Mouth we have already discussed, then the posterior dorsal arm. This is again in pairs. Then the posterior lateral arm. This one, this is also in pairs. Pre oral arm, this one, and the post oral arms, this one. Next is Brachiolaria larva. It is the third larva of starfish. 
the bipinaria larva after a short free swimming flight is transformed into the brachiolaria larva. The preoral region of this larva has three processes called brachiolar arms which will be more clear by the picture. These are the three brachiolar arms one and two and three. These three arms are tipped with suckers. It swims and feeds like a bipinaria larva. And these are the other parts. Mouth, esophagus, stomach, anus, and this is the intestine. <coughs> Ophiocluteus. It is the larva of Ophiroidea and the characteristic features of this larva is the preoral lobe is small, the ciliated band is single, the arms are supported by calcareous rods, the larvae has a pair of preoral arms, a pair of postoral arms, a pair of posterior dorsal arms and a pair of posterior lateral arms which are clearly visible in the picture. The posterior lateral arms are always longer as you can see these are always longer than the other arms and they form a V like shape. This is the V like shape which is characteristic feature to identify the ophiocluteus larva. The other arms are pair of anterior lateral arms, postoral arms again in pair, posterior dorsal arm again in pair, this is the mouth part, this is the stomach and this is the anus. Next is Echinopluteus larva. It is the larva of Echinoidea. It has a small preoral lobe and a single ciliary band. The arms are supported by calcareous rod. The larva is provided with a pair of preoral arms, a pair of postoral arms, a pair of anterior lateral arms, a pair of anterior dorsal arms, a pair of posterior dorsal arms and a pair of posterior lateral arms and a median posterior arm. The posterior lateral arms are very short and are, and are directed backwards. This is the posterior lateral arm which are directed backwards whereas and the posterior arm is also directed backwards whereas the other arm posterior dorsal arm, posterior oral arm, anterior lateral arm, preoral arm, anterior dorsal arm are directed forward. Auricularia larva. It is a larva of holothuroidea and there is a well developed preoral lobe or preoral lobe. Ciliated band is single. Arms are supported not by calcareous rod but the calcareous structures are in the form of wheels, spheres, star shaped bodies etc. This is the mouth part, pharynx, this is the anal loop, stomach, anus and intestine. Doliolaria of Holothuroidea. In Holothuroidea, the auricularia larva develops into Doliolaria. This larva is also called a pupa. It is a free larva, and from the picture, it is clearly indicating the shape is barrel shaped. The calcareous skeleton 
is in the form of spheres. The serrated bands are broken into pieces. Here you can see these are broken into pieces. The metamorphosis begins during free swimming life. After metamorphosis, the larva sinks into the bottom to become adult. This is the pre-oral loop and these are the ossicles. Pentacrinoid larva. It is the second larva of antidome. First larva is the dolularia. It develops from dolularia larva and looks like a sea lily. In the picture it is clear. It has a stalk. This is the stalk region. The stalk develops from the pre-oral lobe of dolularia. One end of the stalk is attached to the substratum. With the help of a disc in the this is the stalk region is attached with the disc and the free end this is the free end which bears the crown the crown consists of a central mouth in the center is the mouth surrounded by circle of tentacles these are the tentacles arising from the crown during metamorphosis the crown develops cirri and breaks off from the stalk as a free living antidote. Thanks for paying attention and in the upcoming lectures we will be discussing more about the phylum echinogrammata. Keep home, keep safe.